God, who throughout these forty days for us did fast and pray, teach us with you to mourn our sins and close by you to stay. As you with Satan did contend and did the victory win, O oh, give us to run in you to conquer sin. As you did hunger, bear, and thirst, so teach us, gracious Lord, to die to self and always live by your most holy word. And through these days of penitence and through your passion time, forevermore in life and death, O Lord, with us abide. Abide with us that when this life of suffering is past, an Easter of unending joy we may attain at last. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Today we have a commemoration, meaning it's an optional memorial during Lent. All memorials during Lent become commemorations. So the Mass prayers will be for St. Felicity and St. Perpetua, who were first century martyrs in the very early church. And, uh, but the other parts of the Mass remain Lenten as well. So we don't wear red today. Let's be seated and we'll do our morning prayer psalms. They begin on page 4. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Renew in me a steadfast spirit. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness, in your compassion. Blot out my offense. O wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. That you may be justified when you give sentence and be without reproach when you judge. O oh, see, in guilt I was born, a sinner was I conceived. Make me hear rejoicing and gladness, that the bones you have crushed may revive. From my sins turn away your face and blot out all my guilt. me again the joy of your help, with a spirit of fervor sustain me, that I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. For in sacrifice you take no delight, burnt offering for me you'd refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humbled contrite heart you will not spurn. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Renew in me a steadfast spirit. Rejoice, Jerusalem, for through you all men will be gathered to the Lord. Let all men speak of his majesty and sing his praises in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord for his goodness and bless the King of the ages so that his tent may be rebuilt in you with joy. A bright light will shine to all parts of the earth 
Many nations shall come to you from afar, and the inhabitants of all the limits of the earth, drawn to you by the name of the Lord God, bearing in their hands their gifts with the King of heaven. Go then, rejoice over the children of the righteous, who shall all be gathered together and shall bless the Lord of the ages. Happy are all the men who shall grieve over you, over all your chastisements. My spirit blesses the Lord, the great King. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice, Jerusalem, for through you all men will be gathered to the Lord. Zion, praise your God, who sent his word to renew the earth. O oh, praise the Lord Jerusalem, Zion, praise your God. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. He showers down snow white as wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He makes his word known to Jacob, to Israel his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his decrees. <clears throat> As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Zion, praise your God, who sent his word to renew the earth. Let us pray. O oh God, at the urging of whose love the martyrs, saints, Perpetua, and Felicity defied their persecutors and overcame the torment of death, grant, we ask, by their prayers that we may ever grow in your love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, cry out full-throated and unsparingly, lift up your voice like a trumpet blast. Tell my people their wickedness and the house of Jacob their sins. They seek me day after day and desire to know my ways, like a nation that has done what is just and not abandoned the law of their God. They ask me to declare what is due them, pleased to gain access to God. Why do we fast and you do not see it? Afflict ourselves and you take no note of it. Lo, on your fast day, you carry out your own pursuits and drive all your laborers. Yes, your fast ends in quarreling and fighting Striking, striking with wicked claw. Would that today you might fast so as to make your voice heard on high. Is this the manner of fasting I wish, of keeping a day of penance? That a man bow his head like a reed and lie in sackcloth and ashes? Do you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? This, rather, is a fasting that I wish, releasing those bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when you see them, and not turning your back on your own. 
Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am, the word of the Lord. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. A heart contrite and humbled. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, why do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. The Gospel of the Lord. We continue to prime the pump of Lent here in these initial days, and it seems like fasting is the word of the day. The prophet Isaiah, he describes dysfunctional fasting, a fast that went bad. Instead of deepening the life of the spirit, it choked it off, so to speak. And then, of course, we turn to the gospel where the Pharisees jump out on Jesus again and say, how come your disciples don't fast? John's did. And Jesus replies that while the bridegroom is here in your midst, there's no need to fast. But once he's gone, then they will fast. And that's, you can read deeper into that and really to the root of what fasting is all about. The problem with fasting is we tend to just make it an external practice, whether that be not eating food on particular days, or we can also apply fasting to other things, like I, one can say I gave up chocolate or I gave up coffee, which I did, by the way, and that's not easy to do. Whoops, I lost the grace on that one. But anyway, but if it's just, it's just doing something or doing without something and we leave it at that, it's not really going to accomplish anything because 
Fasting has really got two purposes. The first purpose, of course, is bodily control. You know, we all have these urges and cravings. They take on many different shapes and forms in our life. I'm just talking about the physical kind, and our hungers are probably the most uh, obvious ones of all. As free thinking, as we who have free will, we can choose not to cave in to those appetites, so to speak. And if, if we can exercise that on a superficial level, it's teaching the body in a much deeper way to also be disciplined against the other weaknesses that go much deeper into our lives, which make us more prone to sinning. So it's teaching us self-control, something that our culture sadly needs. And I think almost wholesalely we've given up the whole practice of fasting because Lent shouldn't be the only time that we fast. It, probably should be a year-round thing that we do. Traditionally, Wednesdays and Fridays are fast days in the church. But there's the other purpose of fasting, and perhaps the food is the most obvious one, but doing without the other things as well, is it gives us a sense of more solidarity and awareness with the poor, with those who don't have the luxury that we have, the luxury of eating three or more square meals per day, the luxury of having chocolate or coffee or TV or anything else. And when we do fast, we should become more conscious of those who are without. And as Isaiah tells us, it then hopefully will motivate us, the spirit will penetrate us to maybe act and do something because the greatest penance of all of the three, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, the third one is the greatest in which we reach out and help, especially where there is injustice, and where there is poverty, where there is want. And when we do that, the bridegroom who is away right now, he now becomes present to us in our fasting. You see, that's why you don't need to fast when he's with us, when he was here 2,000 years ago. And there's no fasting in heaven as well. There's no need for it. But now that he is in heaven with his Father, for us to bring him to ourselves, we need to fast, and that's where Jesus connects it all together in the gospel. And so it's not about fasting just for the pure sense of dieting, just for the external act of doing something for Lent. Everything that we do in our faith needs to have purpose, and purpose means also it has to have effect. Effect in our lives, of course, is a growth in holiness. Our intercessions are found on page seven. Let us pray to Christ our Savior who redeemed us by his death and resurrection. You went up to Jerusalem to suffer and so enter into your glory. Bring your church to the Passover feast of heaven. You were lifted high on the cross and pierced by the soldier's lance. Heal our wounds. You made the cross the tree of life. Give its fruit to those reborn in baptism. <clears throat> on the cross, you forgave the repentant thief Forgive us our sins. We remember the intention of this Mass this morning for the Rooney family. We pray, Lord, have mercy on us. We also remember all our beloved dead, 
especially the clergy of our diocese who died on this day, Father Matthias Schwabeck in 1892 and Father Francis J. Budzikowski in 1901. Let us pray. For any of our own special needs that we voice in the silence of our hearts, We pray, Lord, have mercy on us. Show gracious favor, O Lord, we pray, to the works of penance we've begun, and that we may have strength to accomplish with sincerity the bodily observances we undertake through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer, O Lord, the sacrifice of our Lenten observance, praying that it may make our intentions acceptable to you and add to our powers of self-restraint through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, 
For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, 
who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. in Anaphon, O Lord, make me know your ways, teach me your paths.
Gospel Canticles found on page 8. When you meet those who are in need of clothing, do not turn away from them, for they are your brothers and sisters. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your good deeds shall go before you. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. Come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When you meet those who are in need of clothing, turn away from them, for they are your brothers and sisters. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your good deeds shall go before you. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that through partaking of this mystery, we may be cleansed of all our misdeeds and so be suited for the remedies of your compassion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. For your mighty deeds, O God of mercy, may your people offer endless thanks and by observing the age-old disciplines along their pilgrim journey, may they merit to come and behold you forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.